Welcome back to our channel on One Stop Academy. I am Alison and today's tutorial is going to be on the history of computers. Now this is the first part. It's divided into different parts because the history of computers is large. So we had to divide it into parts to um, for ease of understanding. Learning outcomes for this video, at the end of this video you you would understand um, how the early computing and calculating devices worked. You would also understand the digital and electronic computers, how they worked and different parts they had and what they operated upon. The first calculating device we're going to be looking at is the abacus. I'm sure this is a familiar device to you. You must have come across it while in basic school, while in junior classes, and when you were learning how to count. The Apocos is one of the earliest calculating devices which came into existence around 2400 BC. So you see, it goes really way back. And it was used for performing arithmetic tasks. So arithmetic tasks like addition, subtraction, and multiplication and also division but you know multiplication wasn't directly done with the abacus you would have to do repeated addition to get multiplication uh, a typical abacus is square shaped like the one we have on the screen here is square shaped back then the chinese constructed their abacus with wood because that was what they had in abundance then. The Romans, on the other hand, constructed theirs with metals and steel and stuff like that. The abacus consists of 10 distinct strings, 10 or 11 actually, placed parallel to one another. These strings hold the movable beads which are used for counting. So if you look at the picture we have, these beads upon these strings but these strings in this case are made of wood. These beads are used for counting. The beads, the beads on the abacus represent units, tens, hundred thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, just like in the place value system in mathematics. Also, the abacus can be used to find square roots and cubic roots of numbers. The abacus is also useful for educating children who are learning to count. Right now, now the abacus isn't used for the purpose which it was first created for. It was first created for count for counting, but now it's used as an a teaching aid sort of. If you visit schools, you will find it among the teaching aids they have. So it's used to teach kids how to count and how to subtract and add numbers together. The second device is the Napias Bones. The Napias Bones was created by John Napier in 1617. The Napias Bones was used to find the products and quotients of numbers. The products, you know, products are the outcome of multiplying numbers and quotients, the outcome of dividing numbers. So the Napias Bones was used to do this. And it did this based on the principle of logarithms. Incidentally, John Napier was also the inventor of the principle of logarithms or logarithms so he used his invention to augment his other invention. Napier's bones was constructed as an arrangement of 10 sticks. If we look at the images we have here there are 10 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10. So these 10 sticks of bones or ivory or metal had the multiplication tables embedded on them. So these multiplication tables aided the reduction of the multiplication operations to addition, subtraction, and division operations. Nine of the bones display the multiples of a given number between one to 10. If you look closely, you'd see one to 10 right here. Advanced variations of the device were able to calculate square roots. You know, at first, a first prototype will be created and then when it's seen as successful other prototypes will now be developed but with improvements over the already existing ones just like the devices we have now this is a clearer picture of the napier's bones if you look closely you see the numbered panel one to nine and 
you can manipulate the table you can go around the table if you observe two times one over here will give you two and so on and so forth up until nine times nine give you 81 the pascaline the pascaline or pascaline as the case may be was created by blaise pascal in 1942 blaise pascal was a french mathematician and philosopher who invented this machine in the year 1642 and he made 50 prototypes at that time but right now it's just five of them that are left the remaining can be seen in museums in europe the pascaline could perform addition and subtraction operations directly and multiplication through repeated addition just like i explained previously the pascaline had spoked metal wheel dials with numbers 0 to 9 displayed around the corners of each wheel so if you look at the picture you see the metal wheels and then you see the embedded numbers the pascaline is considered the first mechanical calculator so that's a big one first mechanical calculator you can try to compare this calculator to the calculators we have now even you can even have calculators inside your mobile phones and so that shows you the extent to which um, the history of computer goes stepped reckoner the stepped reckoner was invented by Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz Leibniz was a German mathematician he invented this device in the year 1694. This device could add, subtract, multiply, and divide as an expansion of the Pascaline calculator. So, as an expansion means that it, it, it could do more than the Pascaline calculator. The stepped recorder was based on a gear mechanism and was made of polished brass and steel mounted on an oak case, so mounted on sort of a wooden case. It was about 67 centimeters long. And it is considered the first calculator to use a cursor. The arithmometer was invented by Thomas de Colmar in the year 1820. This device could add and subtract directly and perform long multiplication and division. And the arithmometer is considered the first calculator to be mass produced and used in offices. So it was the first calculator to be produced in a, a, a large quantity and then used commercially in offices and probably in homes. The difference engine was invented by Charles Babbage. Charles Babbage is regarded as the father of computing. This is because his machine the difference engine was considered the first mechanical computer he invented this in the year 1822 and it was designed to tabulate probably due to bottlenecks uh, bureaucracy and so many other reasons it would have been able to calculate and hold seven numbers with 31 digits each and also use results from previous operations as input the analytical engine was Another device designed or invented by Charles Babbage in the year 1834. Didn't give up after his abandoned project, the difference engine. He went further to build the analytical engine, which is considered the beginning of modern computers. So it had, um, it was the basis for the computers which we have now. And it's the first machine to have a set of programming instructions. If you remember, while we were analyzing these other devices, we did not make mention of programs or instructions. Um, if you have no idea about how programs or instructions work, you can visit our channel and watch our video on Introduction to Computers to give you a little insight on how programs work. The analytical engine had four component parts, the meal, store, operator, and output. Now these four parts have similarities with the parts of the computers we have now. The meal acts or acted as the arithmetic and logic unit. The store 
acted as the memory, just like its name, store. The operator acted as the control unit, control unit, which usually works with the arithmetic and logic units. And then the output worked as the input and output system or interfaces, which we have now. Unfortunately, also, it wasn't completed due to inadequate funding. Wow. The millionaire is another device invented in 1893 by Leon Bully. <laughs> I hope I got the pronunciation right. He invented this calculator and it became the first calculator that could perform direct multiplication. It performed multiplication through the turning of a crank and handle to multiply an entered number by a multiple. So basically, it did multiplication. And it's considered, or it was considered, the fastest multiplying machine of the 19th century. That's a big one. The punch card system was brought into existence by Joseph Marie Jacquard in 1801. Jacquard actually used his invention, the punch card, in his machine, the Jacquard Loom. The Jacquard Loom was the first machine that used the idea of storage and programming, actually, but it wasn't a calculating machine. It was, it was a machine for warping threads in the manufacture of textiles, so it ran using programs and storage. But then his idea of the punch card system was adopted by Hermann Hollerith, processing data and for programming computers. Now the punch card system served as a recording medium, so that makes the punch card a part of the history of computer storage. They represented digital information through the presence or absence of holes in predefined positions on a stiff paper. The image we have here cannot obviously tell the thickness of the paper or its stiffness but then the materials that were used for the punch cards were thick and stiff paper-like materials which had holes in them predefined holes so if there is a hole then there is an absence of data if there is no hole there is data and stuff like that now we'll move over to the digital and electronic computers the first is the Atanasov Berry computer, shortened as the ABC computer. This was invented by John Atanasov and his assistant Clifford Berry. They did this um, between the years 1939 to 1941. The ABC was the first special purpose computer that encoded information electrically. So this was a movement from the mechanical calculating devices to actual electrical computers. The ABC was specially designed to solve systems of linear equations. It was first it, it is the first electronic digital computer and it operated with about 300 vacuum tubes. And this is a new concept in this video, vacuum tubes. Our vacuum tubes worked as circuitry for these early computers. A secretary, I mean, what controlled the processing that they did. For example, in the human brain, you have nerves in the brain that send signals all around the body and collect signals also back to the brain. And just like in the computers we have now, the microprocessors. The microprocessors can be linked to how the vacuum tubes operated. So the vacuum tubes acted or performed the same function as the microprocessors we have now. But the ABC was not programmable. Next device is the Mark I. The Mark I was built by Howard Eichen for Harvard University in the year 1940. It was actually built under his direction and supervision. Because, of course, if you look at the image we have here, it, there is no way it can be built by just one person, single-handedly. So, um, the Mark I was a general-purpose electromechanical computer. And it was very huge and weighed up to five tons. The Mark I is officially known as the Automatic Sequence Controlled Calculator. And... Its 
development or its design was influenced by earlier machines like Charles Babbage's analytical engine and the punch card system. The Macon was programmable unlike the ABC, which we just looked at, and it was programmable through punch paper cards and tapes, and it contained several calculation units working in parallel. The Mark I was used for the first time in May 1944 by the U.S. Navy for problem calculations. Now, it's important to note that most of the computers we had at that time were really expensive. Judging by the size, you would know that the, the parts would be expensive. So, it couldn't be afforded by homes and families. It could only be afforded by the government and the army and navy because they had more funds. So you would find that most of the computers were used by the navy and army and for the Mac 1. You can see its size. I mean, it's very large and you can imagine the amount of heat it generated and the amount of electricity it needed to run. This is actually where the idea of debugging came into play. Debugging we have now, we refer to problems with your laptops and your devices, so you debug to find out what the problem is. The initial use of the word debug was actual and literal, like removing bugs, because these machines were big and bugs, insects would fly in and get trapped in their different parts. So there were people who were employed to clean up these computers so they would come and actually, you know, remove the dead insects and bugs. So they called that process debugging. Funny. The next computer is the electronic numerical integrator and calculator, ENIAC. This was invented by Kesper Eckert and John Mockley for the United States Army, once again the Army. It was built to calculate artillery firing tables and it was very huge and weighed over 25 tons. It is the first because the vacuum tubes will occupy more space. The ENIAC was 100 feet long and 10 feet high and it combined the high speed of electronics with the ability to be programmed for many complex problems. The ENIAC was also very fast. It was 1,000 times faster than the electromechanical machines. The Universal Automatic Computer, UNIVAC. This was also invented by the same inventors of the ENIAC, Kesper Eckert and John Mockley. It's considered the first commercial computer produced in the United States. If you look at the image we have, um, the, it came in two parts. The main computer consisting of the different vacuum tubes and the control panel, which is where this hand pointing is on the control panel. So it used about 5,000 vacuum tubes, which was still a lot, and weighed 16,686 pounds. Wow. I wonder who was even measuring, who tried to measure. It consumed 125 kilowatts of power, and it could perform about 1,905 operations per second, running on a 2.25 megahertz clock. That was an improvement over the already existing computers which were in existence. An important feature of the UNIVAC system was a newly invented type of metal magnetic tip. Remember that the other computers used the punch card systems for storing programs, that supplying programs to the computer and also getting results from the computer. The EDVAC, the Electronic Discrete Variable Automatic Computer. This is also invented by the same set of people, Kespa and John, in 1945. And it's the first computer based on von Neumann's idea. Von Neumann was a mathematician and scientist who brought about the model of computers having their program and data stored in memory. So 
computers that had their programs and data stored in the same place in memory were actually referred to as von Neumann computers or computers based on the von Neumann model. So the EDVAC was one of them and so was the first which had its data and program in the same location. The EDVAC was delivered to the Ballistics Research Laboratory of the U.S. Army, U.S. again, the Army again, in 1949. It was a binary serial computer with automatic addition, subtraction, multiplication, and programmed division. So um, it's used, it was one of the early, early computers to use the binary system as against the decimal system, which is what we use in counting normally. It has it had an ultrasonic serial memory capacity of 1044 bit words. So it could process 44 bit words at a time and its memory could contain 1000 of those 44 bit words. And it had almost 6000 vacuum tubes and 12000 diodes. So it combined the vacuum tubes and diodes. Diodes are another kind of circuitry. So it is assumed that the EDVAC was more efficient because it combined two different kinds of circuitry, the vacuum tubes and the diodes. And it consumed 56 kilowatts of power. That was still a lot of heat produced. The electronic delay storage automatic calculator, the EDSAC. The EDSAC was built by Maurice Wax in 1947, and it's considered the second computer based on von Neumann's idea, which went into regular service. It consumed 11 kilowatts of electricity and was built mainly to study computer programming, that's for educational purposes. It executed instructions at a rate of approximately 650 instructions per second. That was a really good improvement. And input was through punched paper tapes and output through teleprinters. So teleprinters was an improvement in the output regarding the output. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on the history of computers part one. Thank you for watching this lesson. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please do so by clicking on the subscribe button. And if you like this video, which I know you like, please click on the like button. And see you in the next lesson. Bye.